with Egypt and the pyramids and what they were telling us about the same kind of thing. And I interpreted the, the start of the last book, the book of Revelation, or the Apocalypse of St. John, however you like to call it. Mm. Um, the beginning of that book um, talks about how St. John has a, a vision of this great cosmic being who identifies himself. He says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And he describes this being as wearing a belt and shining like the sun in its strength and holding seven stars in his hands. I don't know if you've ever read that. Um, it's in the first couple of chapters of the book of Revelation. Mm, I, must have, I and, must have read it, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And um, I sort of had this intuition that this symbol was actually meant to represent Orion. Mm -hmm, mm. That the Alpha and the Omega, um, Orion is the gatekeeper. Orion, if you look at, at the... Um, a picture of the solar, of, not of the sky, using a sky globe program or some such, you will see this clearly that the, there's the band of the Milky Way runs up through the sky, and Orion is on one side of it, but he's holding a hand or a club, however you like to vision it, up towards the ecliptic, which is the pathway of the sun. Mm. You know, the sun moves along the ecliptic one degree each day. Yeah, roughly mm. speaking. Right. So it makes a complete circuit in 365 days. And just over that hand of Orion is where the ecliptic pathway of the sun crosses over the uh, equator or the median plane of the Milky Way. Right. Mm. So that is a crossroads in the sky. And the ancient people believed that the... Two, there's two places in the sky where the ecliptic crosses over the Milky Way. One is in the northern hemisphere, as I say, it's over the hand of Orion. It's actually the border between the constellations of Gemini and Taurus. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other one is in the southern sky, um, in Sagittarius, over the sting of Scorpio. Yeah. And that's close to the center of the galaxy, as John Major Jenkins was telling me. Indeed, yeah. Um, these two positions in the sky the ancients regarded as being gateways. I call them stargates, because <laughs> hmm. I like the term. <laughs> but they're stargates, and they believe that souls come in through one and go out through the other. And after you die, that walk along the Milky Way, the way of the dead, and get reborn coming in through the other one. That's one set of beliefs. But more importantly than that, these stargates actually mark out time very precisely, much more precisely than the concept of um, ages being linked to signs of the zodiac. As you probably realize, that the signs of the zodiac are different lengths. So some signs are large, like Pisces, for instance, is quite large. Aries is quite small. Um, some are medium-sized, like Leo. Um, Libra is very small. So if you're going to say that you're going to start different ages by when the sun, through its precession in the equinox, moves through different signs. You're going to have very uneven ages. Mm. But if you have a marker point, which is more exact, then you can divide up your zodiac into equal segments. Right? Yes, don't, yes. don't necessarily exactly correspond with the zodiacal signs, the, you know, the, the constellations. But you can divide up evenly and accurately. And the stargates give you that, the exact positions where the ecliptic crosses over the median plane of the Milky Way. And it now happens that the sun is positioned with those points. It's over the hand of Orion, exactly at the stargate, at the time of the summer solstice, mm. June the 21st. Mm. And I took a party of people to um, Egypt, to witness this on June the 21st, because it just happens that at Giza, the sun would also be at exactly the right height above the horizon on that day, that if you were standing at the west side of the Khafra pyramid at the foot of it, you could look up the pyramid and you would see the sun sit directly on top, mm. and the pyramid cast no shadow as it crossed the east-west axis. Yeah. Incredible, yeah. So 
that was a kind of sign that and so you can imagine you couldn't see Orion, but you can imagine that as that's happening, he's stretched out in the sky with his hand reaching out to the sun. Right? And I see the sun as symbolizing an ankh. Mm key of life so th this is what, so, what you're describing here. this is taking place behind the veil of the blue sky as it were right yeah this, you can't see because of the brightness of the sun you yes. can't see the stars unfortunately mm. maybe you could in space if you had some kind of special telescope that could block out the sunlight but anyway so you, but we can imagine this because we have computers we can we can figure it that the sun is like a key ank being placed in the gate the stargate mm. Right? So if you imagine that Orion symbolizes um, first and the last, these, this gateway moves down and it moves up over the course of thousands of years. So 13,000 years ago, that stargate, that Orion stargate, was at its lowest position, and the sun would be there at the winter solstice. And then in the course of the last 13,000 years, it's been moving steadily north, and it's now in its most northern position, right? Yeah. So the sun is there at that stargate in the omega position. So Alpha and Omega, the first and last, he measures out time. He's the time lord, yeah? Yeah. And the belt of Orion now is just positioned below the celestial equator. The, imagine the, the planet, our planet's equator projected into the sky. It gives you the equator of the the celestial sphere, the sphere that uh, the stars kind of fit on and rotate round us, so that's how we see it. Um, now that belt will never actually cross that line before it starts moving down again. But in the biblical uh, prophecies of Jesus in Matthew 24, when he's standing on the Mount of Olives, he talks about, as lightning goes from the east to the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Mm -hmm. Maybe you heard those words. Yeah. Well, that word lightning is, in Greek, it's astropy. And it's the same root, astra, which means a light. And I think it's been a mistranslation. It should be asterays, as the stars go from the east to the west. Right, right. The stars yeah. are the belt of Orion, huh. which now rises in the east over the Mount of Olives, right? Mm-hmm goes over, you know, and sets in the west, exactly in the west. Do you think the Mount and of Olives is an analogy for, for the pyramid in that sentence? Well, Mount of Olives is to the east of Jerusalem, and it's where Jesus sat and gave various sermons, and it's where he's ascended to heaven. Um, right, but you, you don't think that's a veiled term for that they're actually speaking about the pyramid in Egypt or something like that? Uh, there is a little pyramid at the foot of it. Okay. <laughs> a little little um, kind of temple with a carved pyramid okay. on top of it. Oh. Um, anyway, mm. um, it just happened that on June the 29th, that's a week after the Egypt, uh, the, 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 the sun on the pyramid, and we went on to Israel um, to witness this, or as much as we could, that Orion would be rising over the Mount of Olives and it would have positioned on one side of him, you would have um, uh, the sun, the moon, uh, Mars, and Venus. Sorry, no, not the moon, uh, Mercury. On the other side, you would have the moon, Jupiter, and Saturn. So he's actually standing amidst the seven planets, which in the ancients were seven lights With or seven, seven stars. And they're symbolized by seven stars yeah, yeah? Yeah. Uh, in the book of Revelation. So and that has not happened before since Jesus wrote those or said those words, right? Ah. So, and the next chapter after this starts, Lo, a door in heaven is open. So I'd sort of interpret this as meaning that this is the opening of the stargate and the start of the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. And Within a few weeks of our coming back home from there, the intifada broke out between the uh, Palestinians and the Israelis, and there were people firing guns from positions where we had been watching the stars just a few weeks earlier, watching the beginning of this rising of Orion. We saw the moon and, and Jupiter and Saturn. We couldn't see the rest because once the sun comes up to a certain height, it blots out everything else. But we saw the beginning of it. Um, and Orion would be standing there with his feet on the Mount of Olives. Huh. 
Uh, this goes fur much further than this because uh, in, in um, also in Science in the Sky, and uh, I wrote something about this in my book Magi as well, um, you can uh, understand that the stories about Jesus, a lot of those relate also to the stars. Yes. I'm not going to go into this in detail, but the I worked out the actual dates when various things happened, like the crucifixion and the resurrection and the ascension and so forth. Um, based, upon, realized, based upon using one of these sky programs where you can actually align yeah, the sky? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm. You had to work out sort of when things began. Yes. But he had a three-year um, mission, um, and it began in 26 AD. And you can work that out from, I think it's St. Luke's Gospel, which talks about the building of Herod's Temple, and so it had been going for 20 years. I, you know, I worked this out, so that was actually the year. Three years later puts you in 29 AD, and we know that the crucifixion is supposed to have happened at the first full moon after the equinox, mm -hmm. which is when Passover festival will be held. And that gave me a date. I think it's the 14th of April. Anyway, it's, it's all in my book. But I've discovered, to my amazement, I mean, there's a lot of correlations involved in the crucifixion and the resurrection, but to my, my amazement, I discovered the ascension took place when the sun's positioned exactly at the stargate over the hand of Orion. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, I'm going to the right hand of the Father. Mm. <laughs> and there the sun is at the right hand of Orion. It's, it's just weird, mm. you know. So, and now we have the situation where that's, that position is positioned exactly at the summer solstice. So whatever is being prophesied as the end of time or the end of days, end of whatever, it must be our time. Because this isn't going to last for very, you know, for a long period so, of time. When, when approximately did we enter into this area and, and our um, time, and, and and when does it approximately end? Then are we talking well, about a time span here, so, or a small frame? Yeah, it's talking about a time span of for one degree. The precession of the equinox takes years. about seventy-two years. So yeah. I think if we talk around about nineteen seventy um, to I know two thousand and thirty. So this That's is all period, so this you know? is the, uh, the the shifting of the ages, as it were, removing from yeah. Piscean age into the uh, Aquarian age. Then I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, in my opinion, I mean, I don't think you should be looking at the constellation of Pisces and Aquarius to see where that cutoff is. If you look at the Stargate, you can work out, you know, the 30 degrees. We're now, if you if you worked out when the summer solstice occurs, mm. then you can work out when the equinox will occur. Yeah, mm. and, and what should be the appropriate tropical sign for that? And it is now moving into Aquarius. So, so this is the opening of the of the Stargate again, and the, the story the, the story is becoming uh, yeah, it, it, it's tying back on on itself again in a way. Absolutely, and and fortunately we had a camera team with us um, who filmed all this when we were in South Africa. Uh, they were from South Africa when we were in Egypt and Israel. Mm. And the film they made is actually going to be broadcast by EMTV next week. Oh, really? Okay. Um, it's the first time wow. ever in England. It's been broadcast in South Africa. It's never been broadcast over here. Um, so on Thursday um, next week, they're going to broadcast the – it's called Signs in the Sky. It's going out at 8 o'clock on EMTV. Mm. And then after that, the, I'm going to be interviewed by um, uh, one of their guys – um, for an hour afterwards to talk about that. So if anyone's listening from England or who has access to EMTV in Europe, I don't know if you do, do you? Uh, Sky Channel 100. I, I've talked a little bit with uh, Keith uh, Goodyear, and, I, and he has mentioned that, that we probably should have access even up here in, in Sweden right. to it, but I'm not sure about all the mechanics, but they do have uh, yeah. all that available on the uh, Edge Media TV website, I think, where people can right. find find that out. Very interesting. Yeah. Hmm. But we're also going to be selling um, DVDs of the program as well. So if anyone can't watch it on Sky, they will be able to get hold of a DVD if they'd like to see it. That's excellent. But, and and, and you know, will you have that uh, av available on your website when that's uh, available? Hopefully, or? yes. Hopefully. Good. Do you know um, how long have, it's going to be? <clears throat> um, well, I've got to set up a shop. 